one. Okay. How much time have we gone through here? Let's see if I need how oh, we've almost gone through 14 minutes. I need to hurry up here. Okay. Next with parabolas, we learned how to um, multiply polynomials using the flow method. We learned how to factor, how to solve by factoring, how to solve using the quadratic formula. Okay. First of all, I can go from factored form to standard form. Um, I remember standard form, let's see if I can write it here quickly, is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So I can go from something that's in, sta from in factored form to make it look like it's in standard form by using flip. Okay, I'm going to practice that. So if I have 4 times x minus 2 times x minus 4, I'm going to multiply x minus 2 times x plus 4 first. I have to multiply the first terms. x times x is x squared. Then the outside terms, x times 4 is 4x. Then the inside terms, negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Then the last terms, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Simplify my like terms, x squared plus 2x minus 8. Then distribute my 4 into all terms. This is equal to 4x squared plus 8x minus 32. Okay, so you can see how that equation now looks like it is in standard form. Okay, and it appeared in factored form at first. Okay, also we learned how to common factor. Pause the video, read the rules here. Um, if I want to common factor this, I first look at the coefficient. What's the greatest number that goes into 25 and 15? Well, that's 5. They both share an x, so I'm going to common factor of the x that has the smallest exponent. So I have an x to the 6, x to the 4, I'm going to take out an x to the 4. Okay, now what I do, divide each of the terms by what I took out. <coughs> okay, and then simplify inside the brackets. I should have equal signs here. 25 divided by 5 is 5. x to 6 divided by x to the 4 is x squared. Um, dividing um, variables. Um, subtract the exponents. x to 6 divided by x to the 4. 6 minus 4 is 2. Um, 15 divided by 5 is 3. x to the 4 by x to the 4 is 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. There we go. So the x is x to the 4 is cancelled there. All right. So there, that's factored. Okay. Now, how to solve by factoring? Okay, it must be set equal to zero. Solving means to find the x-intercepts. We know x-intercepts the y-coordinate is equal to zero. So first set it to equal to zero, um, then factor it, um, then set each factor equal to zero, and solve for x. Okay, and I've already talked about the zero product rule. So let's see what that looks like. In order to solve this, so to find the x-intercepts, I must have to first get it equal to zero, so I need to move the 14 to the other side. x squared plus 9x plus 14. Now there's nothing left on the right, so that's equal to zero. So I have a quadratic in standard form where my a value is 1. In order to factor that, all I have to do is find two numbers who have a, who have a product a product of c, so a product of 14, and a sum of b, so a sum of 9. Two numbers that multiply to give 14 add to give 9. Those two numbers are 2 and 7. 2 and 7. Okay, so what I do, all I do is put those numbers into x plus r times x plus s. So my factors are x plus 2 times x plus 7. That's equal to 0. Okay, if I expand this out using FOIL, I'd see that I'd get x squared plus 7x plus 2x, which is 9x plus 14. Okay, so I've factored that properly. In order to solve this, find the x-intercepts, I have to use the zero product rule and know to set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So this product could be 0 if x plus 2 is equal to 0, which would mean x is negative 2. Or if x plus 7 was equal to 0, which would mean x is equal to negative 7. So those are my two x-intercepts. I've solved by factoring. Okay. So factoring gets a little more difficult sometimes when there's a number in front of the x squared. So when there's an a value um, not equal to 1 and it can't be factored out. Okay. So I've got an a value greater than 1, which is 2, and it can't be factored out, so it's going to be a little more difficult. I have 2x squared minus 11x. I have to set this equal to 0, same as before. So bring the 15 to this side. Okay. So 2x squared minus 11x plus 15 equals 0. Okay. Um, in order to factor this, I have to do something a little bit differently. I have to find two numbers who have a product of not just c, I have to find two numbers of a product of a times c, so 2 times 15 is 30, I need to find two numbers of a product of 30, and the sum of b, sum of negative 11. What two numbers multiply to give 30, add to give negative 11? Those two numbers are negative 6 and 5. So I'm going to break up this middle term into negative 6x minus 5x. Okay, I'm going to leave the first and last terms the same, 
Now in order to factor this, I need to factor by grouping. So I need to group the first two terms together, group the last two terms together, and separate with an addition sign to keep it equivalent. Now I'll common factor each group separately. So take out, I can take out a 2x from that first group, get x squared minus 3, or sorry, x minus 3, because I common factored out an x. Okay. And for this one, I can take out a negative 5, and I'd get x minus 3 left on the inside when I divided both of those by negative 5. Okay. And now you see I have a common binomial. They both have an x minus 3. So I can common factor out an x minus 3. And once I divide both of these terms by x minus 3, the x minus 3 will cancel. I'll be left with 2x minus 5 equals 0. Now solve for the x-intercepts based on the zero product rule. Um, if, x was, if x minus 3 was equal to 0, that would make that product go to 0. So if x is equal to 3, or if 2x minus 5 equals 0, um, x would be 5 over 2. That would make the product go to 0 as well. So those are my two x-intercepts, 3 and 5 over 2. So 3 and 2 and a half. Okay? So that's the harder way of factoring. Um, make sure you practice this before the exam, okay, where the a value is not 1 and can't be factored out. All right. We can also solve a quadratic using the quadratic formula. Okay, quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Remember, solving means to find the x-intercepts. That's why there's an x at the beginning of our equation here. Okay, so if a quadratic is in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, a is 2, b is 9, c is 6, all you have to do is put those numbers into the quadratic formula um, for a, b, and c, where you see a, b, and c, and solve it, okay? There's a plus or a minus here, because the square root of a number could be positive or negative. That's how we get our 2x-intercepts, okay? Remember, not all parabolas have 2x-intercepts. They could have 0, 1, or 2. If b squared minus 4ac is a positive number, you'll have 2. If b squared minus 4ac goes to 0, you'll only have 1x-intercept. And if b squared minus 4ac is a negative number, you can't take the square root of a negative, so they'll have no x-intercepts. So your parabola is either going to look like this, where it goes through the x-axis twice, or it'll look like this or this, where it never touches the x-axis. That's where it has zero um, x-intercepts. Or it'll look like this, where the vertex is on the x-axis, making it only have one x-intercept. Those are the three scenarios. Okay? And you can tell um, how many you'll have based on what your discriminant is. Your discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So if b squared minus 4ac is negative, zero, or positive, that determines whether you'll have zero, um, one, or two x-intercepts. Okay? So let's solve this one. Plug in for a, b, and c. I get x equals negative b, negative 9, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 9 squared, 81, minus 4 times a times c times 2 times 6. All over 2a, 2a, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? Simplify under the square root first, plus or minus the square root of 81 minus 48. 81 minus 48, okay? Um, 81 minus 48. That will give us 33, divide that by 4, so x equals negative 9 plus or minus root 33 over 4. At this point, you're going to break it into two possible answers. We could have x equals negative 9 plus root 33 over 4, or we could have x equals negative 9 minus root 33 over 4. Those are our two x-intercepts, okay? Because our discriminant is positive, so what's under the square root is positive, we're going to have two x-intercepts. Okay, when you plug that in on your calculator, make sure you evaluate the numerator. Evaluate that and then divide it by 4. Okay, when you do that, you'll get negative 0 0.8. When you do this one, negative 8 minus root 33. Evaluate that and then divide that by 4. You get negative 10.4. Negative 10.4. Those are your two x-intercepts. Okay. Um, what would a word equation look, for quadra look like for quadratics? Well, if we had the equation um, of a rocket, is this negative 4.9t squared plus 60t plus 3. Um, so the height is equal to that. Okay, t stands for time. Um, if launched from um, a 3 meter tall platform, how long would the rocket take to fall to the Earth? So here's the rocket launched from here. So basically it's asking us how long will it take before it hits the Earth. So it's asking us for the x-intercept pretty much. So we can solve that using the quadratic formula. You could try factoring. It won't work for this. So we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. Um, when you see decimal numbers, that's a good hint that you shouldn't try and solve by factoring. You should just go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula will work for solving any quadrat. Okay? Um, so we know um, A is negative 4.9, B is 60, 
c is 3, plug that into our quadratic formula, x equals negative b, so negative 60, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 60 squared minus 4a, negative 4.9, times c, times 3, all over 2a, which is negative 9.8, okay? Plug that on your calculator after you divide it into your two possible um, scenarios. Um, you would get x equals um, negative 0 0.05 and x equals um, 12.3. Okay, so we get two x-intercepts because the, technically this problem does continue on this way, but we're only interested in the right side. We're only interested in the positive realm. So we're not interested in this negative answer here. We're interested in this answer. This tells us it crosses the x-axis at 12.3. We know in this case our x-axis represents time. So um, how long will the orbit take to fall the Earth? It will take 12.3 seconds to fall. Okay, you'd write a nice sentence and there's your answer. Okay, what is the maximum height of the rocket and when does the maximum height occur? We know the maximum height. Okay, so that's talking about the vertex. It's asking us about the vertex. Okay, a vertex has an x and a y coordinate. Okay, what is the maximum height? That's asking us about the y coordinate. When does the maximum height occur? So we know x represents the time in this case, so that's asking us about the x-coordinate of the vertex. Okay? I can find the x-coordinate of the vertex. I know the x-coordinate of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. And I know the axis of symmetry is equal is x equals negative b over 2a. That will tell me um, when the rocket, when the maximum height occurs. Okay? So x equals negative b, negative 60 over 2a, which is negative 9.8. Plug that in on your calculator. Okay, and you get 6.1, 6.1 seconds. Okay, so the rocket reaches its maximum height at 6.1 seconds. What is the maximum height? Well, you can figure that out. If the time is 6.1, you can figure out what the maximum height is. Okay, so max height, let's figure that out. All we do is plug in 6.1 into the equation. So the height when um, time is 6.1, so negative 4.9 times 6.1 squared plus 60 times 6.1 plus 3. Okay? All you do, put that all in on your calculator, and you'll get 186.7 um, meters is our units for this. So the maximum height is 186.7 meters.